I will now be discussing the module 3, which is the taxable income of individuals, gross income or net income. In this module, you will encounter several computations wherein I am going to discuss them one by one. So the objectives for this module is for you to be able to learn the taxable income of ordinary individuals, special individuals, and other individuals. And also you need to understand the income tax returns format and formulas. We will begin the discussion with this taxable income. What does it mean? It means this, uh, these are the uh, pertinent items of gross income, less deductions if any. So, ibig sabihin, pag taxable income, dito binabase kung magkano yung tax na babayaran ng isang individual. Special individual taxpayers are normally taxed at the preferential single or flat tax rate of 15% or 25%. That is for special individuals. Okay? Pag sinabi natin flat tax rates, ibig sabihin, ganyan lang, i-fixed na yon yung percentage na yon. It's either 15% or 25%. Pag naman ordinary individual taxpayers, um, they are required to file the income tax return, yung tinatawag natin na ITR. Okay? And are normally taxed at the, ito ang ginagamit natin, graduated or progressive income tax rate of 0 to 35%. So, that is the difference between the special individual and ordinary individual taxpayers. They are also, pagdating din sa individual taxpayers, they are also entitled to claim uh, deductions permitted by tax law. Pag special individuals, kadalasan dyan. Uh, based sa gross, uh, they are not entitled uh, with some uh, to claim some deductions. Yun ang difference naman. Tapos yun nga, flat rate sila. So, determination of income, of taxable net income and basic income tax due. Paano ba kinocompute yun? It's just like this. For example, meron kang gross income. Ibabawas mo lang yung allow deductions. So, you will get the taxable income. And now, income tax due, 0 to 35%. Okay, and then income tax credit. Ang income tax credit, ito yung... Um, uh, pwedeng ibawas kasi ito, for example, nag-overpay ka ng tax. Itong income, income tax credit. So, pwede siyang ibawas sa next taxable... Uh, sa next tax due mo. Yun ang ibig sabihin nun. Or for example naman, uh, may na-withheld na sa'yo na tax. So, ibabawas yun to get the ito, income tax payable. Okay? So, this is the income tax payable. Okay. Next. So, ito yun, basihan niya na yung kanina. Ito yun. Uh, paano ba yan kinocompute? For example, ang tax ang sorry, ang income tax mo ay 200, 250,000 flat. So dito, zero yung tax mo. Wala kang babayaran tax. Pag naman nag-exceed siya ng 250, kaya nga nakalagay dito over, nag-exceed ng 250 pero not over 400,000. Okay, hindi siya sumobra ng 400,000. So, ang tax mo ay unay 0 plus ano, 20% ng excess ng 250,000. For example, ang income mo, ang taxable income mo is 200 Lagyan natin ng ano. For example, ang taxable ang taxable income mo ang taxable income mo is 270 270k. O, pagpasensyahan nyo na yung sulat ko. 270k. 
So, ano gagawin mo to compute? Ang gagawin mo, i-minus mo yung 250. Kasi ba diba sabi nga daw, pag 250k ay exempt. Kaya, magkano na lang? To, mayroon ka na lang na 20k. Yung 20k na yan, saan mo yan i-multiply? Dito. So, that would be times... 20% or pwedeng 0.2. Ayan, 0.2. So, magkano yung 20K times 0.2? So, that is 4,000. 4K. So, sa 270,000 na income mo, taxable income mo, ang income tax dyo mo is 4,000. Okay, based doon. Ngayon, pag lumagpas ka ng 400,000, di dito ka na sa bracket na to. Okay? Dito ka na. Pero dapat hindi lalagpas ang 800,000. Okay, lagyan natin ng example. Ito 400,000, ito hindi lalagpas ng 800,000. For example naman, ang taxable income mo is... Uh, 500 500k Okay, so pag na, nakita mo yan, 500k yan Saan yan pasok? Dito Over 400 but not over 800 So therefore, meron ka na agad 30 Ah, hindi, alisin ko muna yung 30k na yan Okay So, ano muna ang gagawin mo? Kung meron kang four, uh, 500K, pasok ka dito sa uh, over 400 but not over 800. So, ngayon, yung excess daw ng 400,000, yun ang itatimes mo sa 25%. So, 500K minus 400K. 400,000. So, therefore, you have... 100 100,000 Saan mo ngayon i-multiply yan? Multiply mo siya by 0.25. Okay? 2 yan na 2. Oh, mouse kasi ginagamit ko kaya. Okay, so 0.25 magkano yung 0.25 ng 100k? 'Di ba that is 25? Ibahin natin yung color para kita. So, that is 25 25K. Diba? Plus, ano sabi dito? Ito pa daw. Oh. Yan o. Oh. Plus 30 30K. So, therefore, magkano ang, in, ang tax payable niya? Ang tax payable niya ay, ano, 55. 25K plus 30K, 55K ang kanyang babayaran na tax. So, ganun lang yung paggamit nitong, nitong ano ha, nitong tax table. Okay, so sana malinaw tayo doon. Ngayon, under uh, NIRC daw, 2017, in years 2023 onwards, okay, ito na daw yun, magiging tax, ay magiging, tawag dito, magiging table na gagamitin. Okay, next. O, oh, case A. Sa case A, Uh, income tax due if taxable net income is given. Ayan. Mada ito na yung madali. Kasi given na yung taxable, uh, taxable net income. So, kung given na yan, ganito lang yan. Ang income tax due mo is, kasi diba 860,000 daw yung taxable net income. So, ang magiging ano yan is, Diba, excess siya ng 800,000. So, yung excess ng 800,000, multiply mo. So, 800,000 minus uh, 
ay 860,000 minus 800,000 kaya itong 60,000 na to yaan yon kasi di ba excess siya ng 800 eh kaya ang mangyayari 860 minus 800 kaya nakuha yung itong 60,000 tinime sa 30% tapos plinas siya dun sa 130,000 Nasa table yan. Susundin nyo lang yung table. So, ngayon, ang income tax due niya, yung ITD na tinatawag, income tax due niya, is 148,000. So, madali lang kasi given na nga yung uh, taxable net income. Sa case B naman, okay, Income tax due ang given. Ayan o. Income tax due ang given. So, ano ang pwede natin gawin dito? Kung given ang income tax due. So, ito mag-work back ka lang. Ano? Kung 37,500 siya. Okay. So, mag-work back ka. So, kailangan mong tingnan yung uh, tingnan yung tax table, kung saan siya pumapasok. Ano? So, katulad nito, kung ang taxable income ay 400,000, so, ibig sabihin, more than 400,000 siya. Kasi, mm, may 30,000 eh. Ayun, no? 37,500 eh. So, saan ang galing yung 7,500? So, 7,500 divided by 25%. Okay? So, pag na-divide mo yan, that is 30,000. Kaya, 400, 400 plus 30,000. Kaya, siya 430,000. Kaya, ito nakuha kasi, tiningnan nga muna dun sa tax bracket. Kung 37,500, saan papasok yun? ba? Yun na kasi yung tax due, yung babayaran niya. So, you just need to work it back, pero with the guide of the tax table. Okay, so ito naman yung, ano, ito, ito rin yung pagbabasihan ninyo. Okay, pag resident alien, and resident alien at engaged, tsaka special alien. So, pag resident alien, tsaka uh, uh, resident citizen, so yan, no, nakita ninyo, pare-pareho yan, 0 to 35%. Okay, resident alien, ganun din. Pero, Philippine lang, 0 to 35% din. Pero, pag non-resident alien not engaged in business in the Philippines, 25%. Pag special alien naman or if special Filipino employee, tinatawag natin na safe, 15% naman yan. So, income tax for resident citizen. So, pag nga resident citizen, ang, ang ginagamit natin dyan ay yung tax table. Kaya, that is, nakita ninyo, taxable net income world, pag sinabing taxable net income world, ang kukuhaan ng tax sa kanya ng gobyerno ay hindi lamang yung income niya sa Philippines. Kukunan din ng tax pati yung income niya sa iba't ibang panig ng mundo kung meron. Kaya, world. Times 0 to 35% percent, uh, percentage, which is based on the tax table. Okay? So, the taxable net income world is determined, yun nga, ilalagay yung mga declare niya lahat na income niya from compensation, pwedeng business din, and other income within, ayan o, within and without the Philippines. Pag sinabi natin without, sa labas ng Pilipinas. Okay, the excess of gross income world over the allowed deduction world is called the taxable net income world. Kasi, di ba, Pag minus natin yung deduction at saka yung gross income niya, taxable net income world ang tawag doon. Okay. So, standard format of income tax return for resident citizen. So, ito yung format. Una muna, kunin mo, kukunin yung gross income Philippines, yan, gross income abroad. So, pag pinag-plus mo sila, katulad nito, 1.5, 
1,250,000 plus 675,000. So, makukuha natin yung GIW, which is the Gross Income World. So, that is 1,925,800. Ngayon, after you get the Gross Income World, you need to deduct naman the allowed deductions. Siyempre, Philippines, ADP, yan, allowed deductions Philippines and allowed deduction World, ADA. So, that is 610,000 plus 620,000. So, that is 1,230,000. And then, from that, you will get the Taxable Net Income World or the TNIW, which is the 695,800. And then, from that, titignan mo na dun sa, ta sa tax table kung paano mo makukompute yung income tax due niya. Okay, so hindi ko na ito ipapaliwanag because naipaliwanag ko naman na ito dun sa unang slides. So, ang nakuha dito is 103,950. Okay, if, there, if you need more clarification, you may ask it naman on our GC. Tanong yun na lang pag may mga clarification kayo na kailangan regarding this topic. Okay, next, final income tax for resident citizen. Okay. So, ayan. Ang tinatawag kasi dyan yung mga passive income, di ba? Tsaka yung mga sa mga capital asset. Meron naman mga given rates dyan. Nasa module din. Kung paano siya makukumpute. And also, income tax, income exempt from income tax for resident citizen. Ang kadalasan talaga, syempre, under train law, ang talagang exempt from income tax ay yung tinatawag natin na uh, minimum wage. Ano, minimum wage earner or yung na-earn ng isang citizen, resident citizen, as a, from statutory minimum wage item. Okay? So, later ipapaliwanag natin yan. Rule number two, income tax for resident alien, resi non-resident citizen, non-resident aliens engaged in business in the Philippines. So, paano naman yan? In general, pag resident aliens, non-resident citizen, tsaka non-resident aliens engaged in business in the Philippines, they are based on 0 to 35% or the tax table. Pero, ang pinakaiba nga lang niya, ang kukuhaan lang natin ng tax ay yung taxable net income niya within the Philippines. Okay, so these are the compensation income, business income, or other income that are derived or incurred, uh, or, sorry, that are derived within the Philippines and that ang allowed deductions niya rin ay yung na-incur lang within the Philippines. So that is the rule. Yun ang pinakaiba niya sa resident citizen. So, this is the standard format for computing the income tax due. So, as you can see, ang gagamitin lang dito is the GIP, which is the Gross Income Philippines. Then, deduct the ADP, which is the Allowed Deduction Philippines, to get the Taxable Net Income Philippines. So, dito, 1,235,000 less 870,000. So, you will get 365,000. And from that, gagamitin na yung te, uh, tax table to get the income tax due. Okay, so ganun din when it comes to final income tax at saka yung mga income exempt for resident alien. So, mayroon din yan mga guidelines and mga list kung ano-ano ba yung mga yan. Next, rule number three. Paano naman daw kung NRA and EBP? Ibig sabihin, non-resident aliens not engaged in business in the Philippines. So, ito, madali lang. Ang kwenta, ano lang, mumultiply mo lang siya sa 25%. Paano example niyan? For example, ito yung kanyang salary, ito yung kanyang allowed uh, allowances, sorry, allowances, other compensation, may mga dividends pa, other profit. So, napansin ninyo, gross income in Philippines. Gross ang pinag-uusapan. Wala kang ibabawas. Okay? So, kung magkano lahat ang kinita niya within the Philippines, gross amount niyan, imumultiply sa 25%. Kaya, 609,600 you get 
So, ganun din yung final income tax and income tax. Kadalasan yan, 25% na rin ang rate gross. Rule number 4. Papano naman daw pagka-special alien or Filipino employee or SAFE na tinatawag? So, yun. Based siya sa fifth, uh, ang tax rate niya ay 15% pero brace, based din sa taxable gross compensation within the Philippines. This is the illustration. Ayan, yun yung salary niya, yun yung allowance niya, yun yung other compensation niya. So, ang total is 629,000. So, you just have to multiply that at 15% to get the 93,000, sorry, 94,350. So, napakadali niya lang computein. Kung magkano yung kinita nung uh, safe na yun, multiply lang by 15%. Okay, sino ba yung mga safe? Siyempre, tatanong nyo, eh, paano po namin malalaman kung safe yung ano, individual? So, ito yung mga yun. So, they are the, a foreigner or a counterpart Filipino employee who is holding a managerial or technical position employed by certain specified business organizations in the Philippines cited as follows okay so ibig sabihin they are working here in the Philippines pero yung company na pinagtatrabuhuhan nila ay either of these four una regional area headquarters of a multinational corporation when we say multinational corporation Hindi lang sa Philippines nag operate ang corporations na ito, but all over the world. Okay, pwede rin sila employee ng isang regional operating headquarters of multinational corporation, pwede rin offshore banking units, or foreign petroleum service contractor or subcontractor that are engaged in uh, petroleum operation in the Philippines. So, kapag ang isang um, foreigner or Filipino ay employed dito, they are considered as a special alien or Philipp uh, they are under the safe category. Yung safe na sinasabi natin, yun na nga, special alien, alien or Filipino employee. And, pag, gal pag sila ay under that 15% of gross compensation income in the Philippines. Or, may nakalagay pala dito, or at the basic income tax rate on taxable income in the Philippines. Kapag ang special Filipino employee ay sa regional area, ah, okay. Regional area headquarter or regional area, regional operating headquarter of, of a multinational corporation. So, meron na pala. They have the option. Pero kapag ka offshore banking units ka, tsaka foreign petroleum service contractor or subcontractor, dito ka, 15%. Pero pag under ka dito sa 1 and 2, you have the option, either 0 to 35%, which is based on the tax table, or 15% of the gross compensation income. Okay, for employee only, ito naman yung mga computations natin. Paano kapag pure compensation lang siya? So, anong gagawin natin? Yan, pure compensation income niya. Yan, gross compensation income. Tapos, add non-trade business or professional income if any. Pag sinabi natin non-trade business or professional income, ano rin ito? Compensation income lang ito. Kasi, di ba, pure compensation eh. Meron na, ito kasi maaring itong mga items na ito. Ito yung mga hindi kasama sa basic pay niya. Okay? And then, you will get the gross compensation income. And then, you will look at the tax table to get this one. 82,500. Paano naman daw if self-employed only? Dito, empleyado siya. Purely employee. Dito naman, self-employed. So, pag sinabi natin self-employed, ibig sabihin, meron siyang uh, business income. Okay? So, here, here is the business income. Siyempre, pag may business income, Meron din siyang other income pa, di ba? Na hindi derived from the business income to get the gross income. And then, the allowed deduction. Ano ba itong mga allowed deduction na ito? Pwede itong yung mga business expenses niya. 
Ano pwede niyang ibawas dyan? So, you will get the taxable income, tapos titignan mo lang siya dun sa tax table to get the income tax due. The other one, paano naman kung mixed income earner? So, kung mixed income earner, eh, you will get the compensation income plus yung business income plus yung other income pa to get the gross income. E, eh, deduct yung allowed deduction to get the taxable net income. And then, titignan sa tax table to get the income tax due. So, anong napansin niyo? Pag minimum uh, income earner, pinagsasama-sama na lahat. Tapos, ibinabawas yung mga allowed deductions. Ngayon, ano ba yung mga allowed deductions doon? Siyempre, yung mga business expense. Kasi, ano siya eh, mixed earner siya. Meron siyang income from business. So, pwede, pwede siyang i-allow na magkaroon ng deduction like yung business expenses. Take note ha, business expenses ito. These are not pro, uh, personal expenses. So, pag nagkukumpute tayo ng tax, pag nag, uh, nag, uh, tawag dito, nag-report ka na meron kang business income, ang pwede mo lang i-deduct doon ay business expenses din. Yung kuryente mo sa bahay, hindi pwede. Yung pinanggasolina mo for personal use, hindi rin pwede yun. Okay? Dapat yung sa business. So, now we will go to the income taxation for the minimum wage earner. So, you are familiar naman na with what a minimum wage earner is. So, ibig sabihin, pag minimum wage earner ka, you are under a private sector, paid ka within the statutory minimum wage. Okay, when we say statutory minimum wage, ito yung fixed na binibigay, fixed rate na binibigay ng uh, Regional Tripartite Wage and Productivity Board. So, depende ito kung nasa ang lugar ka, kung nasa syudad ka, mas mataas ang minimum wage. Ano? Pero pag nasa probinsya ka, medyo mababa siya kasi it depends on the place that you're working in. So, compensation income of employees in the public sector. Pagka naman public sector ka at more than ka sa statutory minimum wage in any non-agricultural sector, applicable yun kung saan siya naka-assign. Okay, basic salary of minimum wage in public uh, sector shall be equated in the SMW in the non-agricultural uh, sector. Next, basic pay. Pag basic pay, ang, in, exa, ang kasama dito, ito yung COLA na tinatawa, which is the cost of living allowance. Kasama din dyan ang holiday pay, overtime pay, night shift differential pay, hazard pay, na na-earn ng minimum wage earner. Covered yun dun. Pero, pwede rin naman siyang makareceive ng additional compensation, di ba? Such as, ano, commission, honoraria, fringe benefit, incentive benefits. Ngayon, Ah, uh, meron tayong na-discuss na, na 'di ba? These are uh, pwede siyang maging exempt. Pero hanggang 90,000 lang a year. Pag lumagpas ang 90,000, 'yan. Okay. Pwede na siyang maging taxable. Pero dapat hindi 'yun yung basic pay, okay? 'Yun yung ano diyan, rule. Paano daw pag may other income yung minimum wage earner? For example, meron siyang business, nagpa-practice siya ng profession. Okay? So, they are not exempt from income tax. Okay? They are not exempt. Hazard pay shall mean the amount paid uh, to the minimum wage earner. Pag sinabi kasi natin yung hazard paid, Binibigay ito kapag kayong empleyado ay exposed to distress or isolated station ka sa camp o kaya naman exposed ka sa great danger, okay, peril of life, ayan, kaya may hazard pay ka. Ngayon, any hazard pay paid to MWEs which does not satisfy the above criteria is deemed subject to income tax. So, ganito ha, pag daw pinayarang ka ng hazard pay, kahit na MWEs ka, at hindi na satisfy yung criteria sa taas, ibig sabihin, um, 
Uh, tawag dito, tinawag lang siya na hazard pay, pero hindi ka naman isolated, hindi ka naman, hindi ka naman distressed, hindi ka naman nag-work sa, kumbaga hindi na meet itong mga criteria na sinabi dito. The consequence will be, it will be, ano, subject to income tax at withholding tax. So, reduction of the diminution of wage for the purpose of exemption from income tax shall constitute means representation of therefore automatic disallowance of expense. Okay, so hindi rin pwede yan. Wage order shall not cover the household or domestic helpers, person or person service or other person including the family driver. So, hindi rin yung kasama. Ano? Now, paano ang income taxation for non-minimum wage earner? So, pag uh, minimum, wage earn, minimum wage earn income consisting only the five statutory minimum wage items. So, yung five uh, statutory minimum wage items na yun, pinakita na natin dun sa una. Ano? Kasi pag sinabi natin minimum wage earner, exempt talaga sila sa tax. Mamaya makikita ninyo kung paano yung computation. So, income taxation daw for, ta uh, for taxable minimum wage earner. Okay. So, itatax sila like ano ito. Like ordinary income taxpayer. And they also should file their income tax return and pay their taxes dues. Now, which are the I what are the items that are included as a statutory minimum wage? Una nga yung cola, holiday pay, overtime pay, hazard pay, and night differential pay. Okay? So, taxable minimum wage uh, earners so, ang taxable income nila, this, based pa rin sila sa 0 to 35%, which is the tax table. So, here, ito, wala ito dun sa una ninyong module. Idinagdag ko lang ito kasi napansin ko, wala pa lang nakalagay na sample computation for the taxable income and tax due of a minimum wage earner. So, we have here an example Si Mr. X, okay, siya daw ay nag-work sa 1 to 3 company. Si Mr. X ay not engaged in business. Wala din siyang other source of income. Nag-earn siya ng total compensation income of 135,000. So, ito yung kanyang fill health at saka yung HDMF niya. And may na-receive siya na 5,000 yun na, and may na-receive siya na 11,000. So, magkano ang total compensation income niya? That is 135,000. Mapapansin niyo ang mandatory contributions, these are deducted ha sa taxable income, kasi they are tax exempt. Okay? Another one, non-taxable benefits, which is the 11,000, dahil siya ay 13th month pay it is considered as de minimis benefit. Okay, tsaka hindi naman siya nag-excess dun sa 90,000 na ceiling in a year. Kaya, 5,000 plus 11,000, you will get the 16,000. I-less dito sa 135,000, kaya nakuha ang taxable income na 119,000. So, anong napansin ninyo? Ang tax dun niya ay <clears throat> exempt. Exempt siya because he is considered as minimum income earner. And <clears throat> if you can recall, sabi nga natin, pag 250,000 a year, okay, less than, okay, pwedeng 250k below, ano nga yan? Exempt sa zero yung percentage ng income tax junya So, wala siyang babayaran ng tax. Letter B. Paano daw kung si Mr. X ay nag-earn pa nito? Meron siyang uh, mula daw, uh, aside from basic wage, meron pa daw siyang additional pay na 140,000. Ano-ano yung mga kasamahan nun? Overtime pay. 
night differential pay, tapos ano pa, hazard pay, tapos may holiday pay pa siya. So, napansin ninyo dito, di ba may compensation income na siya na 135,000, inad pa natin yung 140,000, okay? So, ang total niya, 275,000. Eh, di ba may mandatory, ano siya, contribution, sabi kasi dito, the same benefits daw as A. So, 5,000, tsaka 11,000, so that is 16,000. I-minus mo, 275,000 minus 16,000. So, nakita nyo, ang net taxable income niya is 259,000. Kung mapapansin ninyo, lumagpas siya dun sa 250,000 na ceiling. ba diba? May na-mention ako kanina. 250K. Sabi nga natin, 250K below yun yung walang tax. Kung titingnan nyo, mayroon siyang lumagpas na 9,000, pero ano ang ano ang computation ng income tax dyan niya? Exempt pa rin, ba? Diba? Bakit siya exempt pa rin? Kasi nga, siya ay minimum wage earner. So, ang a statutory minimum wage niya, Di ba kasama dun yung holiday pay, overtime pay, night shift differential pay, at saka hazard pay? Kahit yan ay lumagpas ng 250,000 because minimum wage earner siya, siya ay, ano, exempt pa rin sa tax. Okay? So, paano naman kapag married couple? Paano pag mag-asawa? So, paano sila mag-file mag ng tax nila? Sabi dyan, both spouses. Hindi pwede isa lang. Tapos, each spouse shall be separately computed. Yung taxable income ng bawat spouse ay kinocompute. Tapos, identify the income and expenses. Tapos, where it is impractical for spouses to file an income tax return, each spouse may file separate tax return of income. Okay, separate. Pwedeng separate. O, katulad niyan, si husband, si wife, tapos combined. O, lahat. Yan yung kanilang ano. Tapos, mayroong unspecified income. Di ba, pagka mag-asawa, hatian yun. So, 50-50 sila. Ayan. Ile-less din yung kanilang mga deduction. Ito yung basic tax dyan nilang mag-asawa. Pwedeng, pwedeng isa lang, pwede rin namang Pwede rin namang magkahiwalay silang magfa-file. Okay? So, income taxation for parent and child. Paano kung both working? Okay, so, shall compute, ano, separately. Ayan, separate. Okay? A minor children who are gainly employed are mandated to, by law, to file their own separate income tax return through their guardians or parents. Di ba may mga cases na ganyan? Mga minor pa lang, pero kumikita na ng pera. Example yun, yung mga artista, di ba? Bata pa lang sila, pero may pera na sila on their own. Dahil sa kinikita nila sa kanilang pag-aartista. So, papano yun? Yung bata, magpa-file siya ng separate income tax return niya. Pero syempre, hindi naman pwedeng siya yung mismo magpa-file through guardians or parents, pero bukod yung kanyang tax na babayaran. Okay, however, the income of an unmarried minor derived from property gratuitously received from a living parent by way of gift or donation shall be included and declared as part of the parent donor's gross in income in his or her own tax return. Parang ganito. For example, uh, buhay pa yung parents, tapos meron silang apartment. Yung property na yun, ipinangalan na nila dun sa anak nila. Tapos dahil may apartment yun, kumikita yun, di ba? E minor pa yung kanyang, ano, kanilang anak o kaya unmarried minor. Kasi alam nyo, pagka ang, ano, kahit minor yan. Pero pag yan ay nagpakasal na, that is considered as, ano na, hindi na siya dependent. Okay? Kasi kahit minor ka, asawa ka na eh. 
So, di ka na dependent. Kaya nakalagay talaga dito, naka-specify na unmarried minor. Okay? So, kapag ako na, minor ka, married ka, tapos pinamanahan ka naman o niregaluhan ka ng mga magulang mo ng isang property na kumikita, you have to file on your own. Pero kung ikaw ay unmarried minor, yung iyong mga magulang or guardian ang magfa-file or donor ang mag sasama nung income ng property sa income tax return niya. Okay? If the related donor's tax is still unpaid. Okay? Ngayon, kung ang parent donor ay yung legal owner pa rin ng property at nung income na yun, siya pa rin ang magfa-file. Paano daw kung Ito daw, the following situation, an income on such donated property shall be reported as part of child donor's gross income. Una, kapag daw yung donor stocks ay nabayaran na dun sa property na yun. So, ibig sabihin kasi, pag nabayaran na yung donor stocks, lumipat na yung property dun sa minor. Ayan o, when transfer of such property is exempted from donor stocks, in case the do the child donor is already the legal owner of the property. Pag naman exempted, so yun, legal owner na siya. So, parang ang rule dito, uh, kung ang legal owner na ay yung minor, hindi na isasama yun dun sa, uh, sa income nung donor or ng parent. So, paano naman daw pag taxable estate? Ang estate, ito yung value ng property, okay, ng isang namatay na, na tao. Decedent on date of death. Pag sinabi natin decedent, ito yung deceased individual. Ibig sabihin yung namatay na individual, na yung property niya ay subject sa law on succession. Pag heir or beneficiary, ito naman yung mga person na tatanggap nung property inheritance. Pag executor, ito yung person appointed by the decedent to take charge. Kadalasan ito yung mga abogado. Administrator, a person appointed by the court to take charge, preserve, manage, and distribute the estate of a deceased person. Administrator ang tawag sa kanila. So, meron tayong tinatawag na income producing estate kasi 'di ba may pagkakataon na patay na yung may-ari, syempre. Pero yung yung property niya, nag-earn pa rin ng income. Paano 'yon? Okay, so ang mag-ma-manage uh, muna niyo yung administrator. Hangga't hindi pa na ipapamahagi sa mga uh, heir or beneficiaries income na na-derive doon, okay, shall not be subject to income tax on part of the said estate. Sabi dyan, yung estate daw na yun is considered as non-taxable estate. So, income producing estate considered a taxable person. Paano daw kung siya naman ay under administration? Kaya siya daw ay considered as taxable individual person. So, dahil doon, um, meron siyang tax na babayaran. So, taxable estate. Ayan. So, yan. Yan yung mga kailangan gawin. You have to comply or apply the law. Observe the rules on gross income. So, hindi natin ito masyadong iya, ano, ha? Uh, these are just uh, additional knowledge. Ano? Tapos, pwede rin gumamit daw yan ng OSD or optional standard deduction. Okay. Ito, eh. Ito yung example niyan. So, gross income ng estate less yung expenses tapos yun na-distribute na sa mga heirs to get the taxable net income tapos based pa rin siya sa tax table. 0 to 35%. Dati, yung ganyang estate, 
Meron yang ano, bukod na tax table. Pero ngayon yun na rin. So, taxable trust naman. Ano ba yung trust? To agreement executed between a trust or guarantor to a trustee fiduciary whereby the property of the uh, guarantor Grantor is transferred to the trustee for conservation or management and ultimately the title to the property in trust as well as the income therefrom will be transferred to the beneficiary as directed by the grantor. Meron kasi mga pangyayari na, for example, may property, nilalagay lang muna sa trust kasi wala pa of legal age yung beneficiary o kaya hindi pa nami-meet ng beneficiary yung condition ng grantor ng property. So nilalagay mo na siya sa trust. Tapos kapag ka na na-meet na yung uh, re, tawag dito yung requirement o kaya of legal age na yung beneficiary, saka naman matatransfer yung property doon. So, grantor, syempre siya yung owner ng property. Ang trustee, siya yung nagpe-preserve or nagmamanage ng property in trust. At yung beneficiary naman, siya yung magiging successor ng property in trust. Ngayon, meron tayong tinatawag na trust na revocable. Okay, revocable trust. Ang ibig sabihin ng revocable trust, yung uh, title ay pwedeng mag-revert sa grantor anytime. Okay? Pag naman, if the entire income of trust is for the benefit of the grantor, okay, kumbaga lahat ng ano is nasa discretion pa rin ng grantor. So, ano ang assumption doon? Ang income daw ay credited sa grantor. Kasi nasa kanya lahat din na benefit eh. And dahil sa grantor yun, it should be part of the gross income ng grantor sa income tax return niya. Okay, dito tayo sa taxable trust. Ano ba yung taxable trust? Um, it is considered like an individual subject to income tax. Individual income tax. So, yung trust na yun, i-consider siya as individual person or taxpayer for income tax purposes. Okay? So, ito naman yung i-explain ko. Paano kung uh, consolidated yung, ano, yung trust? Ibig sabihin, yung, ano, yung grantor, meron siyang two or more separate contract of trust, pero ang beneficiary na isa lang, one and the same beneficiary. So, each trust daw ay magpa-file ng separate income tax return sa BIR and then yung BIR naman ang magko-consolidate na yon. Then the trust shall share in the total income tax due and payable from the consolidated trust. So, paano to kino-compute? For example, trust 1, trust 2, hindi pareho sila may gross income. Ide-deduct natin. Yan, deduct natin yung kanilang mga allowed deduction to get the net income. So, ito, ito, i-combine natin sila. Ito, yan, ibabawas yan. So, ang combined taxable net income nila is 690,000. From 690,000, dito natin i-compute ang tax due. Okay? So, you will look at the uh, tax table. So, ang na-compute dyan is 102,500. Sana naman nakuha itong 38,000. Yung 38,000, yan yung dalawa na yan. 20,000 plus 
18,000. Yan yung 38,000 na yan. Okay? Kasi ito yung binayaran ni Trust 1 tsaka ni Trust 2. Pero ang talagang dapat babayaran, 102,500. So, ibawas natin yung binayaran nila. Kaya, ito na lang yung babayaran pa. Okay? 64,500. Na itong 64,500 na ito, kailangan ito, kailangan mag-share ni Trust 1 at Trust 2 para mabayaran itong 64,500 na babayaran pa dun sa nilan na tax. Wa? Ngayon, paano daw ang allocation? Ito yung allocation na tinatawag natin. Paano ang hatian, kumbaga? Ito ang formula. Yung net income, il divide sa combined net income times combined income tax. So, katulad nito. Si Trust One, di ba, ang net income niya, 350. Ayan yun, no? 350, 350. Ang, ang total income, di ba, ay 690. So, divide sa total income ng 690. I-times naman dito. So, 102,500. Yun yung 102,000. So, ang babayaran ni Trust One ay 51,930. Okay? Si Trust Two naman. Si Trust Two 340. Yun na yun, 340. 690, yun yung total. Times 102,500. Yun na yung kanina. So, ang babayaran niya naman, 50,500. 7. Pero diba dito, ito naman yung computation niyan. Diba ang babayaran ni Trust 1 ay 51,993? Eh diba nagbayad na siya dito ng 20,000? Ayun, may nabayaran na siya. So, 20,000. Kaya anong gagawin? Ibawas mo. Ito na lang yung bab ito pa yung babayaran niya. 31,933. Okay, yan pa yung babayaran niya. Ganon din yung kay Trust 2. Diba ito yon Na-compute natin dito. Ito yon E may nabayaran na siya dito. Yan o, na 18,000. Yun yun. So, ang babayaran niya pa ay 32,507. Ngayon, pag pinag-plus nyo yan, dalawa na yan. Pag pinag-plus nyo yan, ang kalalabasan niyan ay ito din. 64,000. 500 na dapat bayaran. So, ibig sabihin, dun sa 64,500, kay Trust 1, 31,993, kay Trust 2, 32,507. Okay? So, yun yung compute. So, paano naman daw pag nasa abroad? So, gross income from trust abroad, tapos allowed deduction, ayan. To get the taxable net income, tapos ang tax dyan niya ay based dun sa tax table pa rin. Okay? So, that's all the um, lecture. Yun lahat yung explanation ng mga computation. And then, kung meron kayong clarification regarding dun sa assignment ninyo, just ask me sa ating GC. Okay? And that's all and thank you.